Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's Rugby Championship Round 2 review. The box go back to back bonus point victories against the Wallabies. New Zealand respond in perfect uh, fashion by smashing Argentina at Eden Park um, to pick up their first points of the Rugby Championship. Argentina in third place, just one point behind New Zealand. They will host Australia twice now in the next two rounds which will take place not this coming weekend but the weekend after so the rugby championship could really be quite heating up in the next few weeks it's still relatively open because obviously there have been then you know that many teams for example um and that first sort of loss um for Australia and new zealand means that uh you know other teams can, can catch up quite quickly so for example new zealand were to beat south africa argentina were to beat australia um then we could almost have you know three teams all on sort of 10 11 9 sort of eight points after three rounds at the halfway mark. So uh, this rugby championship is far from over, but the spring marks very much in a pole position. You know, they're currently sort of 10 out of 10 possible points. A victory against New Zealand um, would arguably sort of almost have them one hand on the trophy because they've got a home game against Argentina. I don't think, you know, we don't really, we don't lose Argentina at home. As we perfectly honest, apart from that sort of derm test a few years ago. Um, but we've always got a pretty strong history against Argentina. Um, going away will be the issue, but uh, we've got those back-to-back -back victories back in South Africa, or back-to-back -back games, rather, back in South Africa against New Zealand. That will really determine the rugby championship, um, I think, especially if Australia were to pull off a, a victory against Argentina. But before we look at sort of this past weekend, the games to come, and some of the stats, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Let's have a look at it, shall we? And uh, things will start off on Saturday with... New Zealand hammering Argentina, 42 points to 10. Um, this was the performance we needed to see. I think this was the first real performance that where we've gone, hmm, this is the New Zealand that, we, that, that scares people. You know, this is the team that, uh, this is the performance that Scott Robertson wants to see on a weekly basis. Um, because whilst Argentina were p pretty poor, if we're going to be brutally honest, um, you know, it was also a case of New Zealand being much, much better. Um, and, uh, you know, the stats do tell that story, you know, six tries to one, um, you know, 466 meters gained across 110 carries, you know, 31 defenders beaten, nine clean breaks, far more passes, more offloads, and a few turns conceded, you know, those are stats that show you just how dominant um, the All Blacks were. But more importantly, I think, you know, from an attacking perspective, they looked like the All Blacks at all, who could score from anywhere. Um, and I thought that, you know, certain players who were under pressure had very, very good games. So Dave McKenzie, for example, he kicked beautifully, but uh, a couple of good decision-making as well. But Burton Barrett full back, um, they looked like the, the New Zealand, uh, a bit more sort of New Zealand we saw during the, the last days of the World Cup last year. Um, they are the team to beat in the, in the championship for South Africa. You know, that, this is the team we need to try and beat. It's difficult to sort of gauge exactly where they are because they've had two... Maybe not as convincing wins as we as is All Blacks fans would have liked against England, for example. They then hammered Fiji. They then lost to Argentina. They now beat Argentina quite convincingly. So it's a bit difficult to understand exactly where this New Zealand side is. Um, defensively, looked pretty solid this weekend as well. Um, as mentioned, 100% uh, conversion accuracy. Keen a lot in play. I think that's very interesting to see. Um, far more than Argentina. It was pretty horrible conditions at both sort of games as well. It'll be interesting to see how South Africa sort of negate that sort of kicking game. And I think the big thing I think for New Zealand as well was their, their, their set pieces were a lot better this weekend. I thought they scrummed really well. Um, their 90% win success rate there, 93.8% lines as well. So uh, their set piece looked pretty solid and uh, that's always bodes well for you. You know, teams that, that win matches generally have a pretty good set piece and defense as well. Uh, um, was pretty beautiful, as well as their discipline. And if you look at the areas, this is where they sort of had most of their possession. So played a lot of the game in Argentina's half, um, and a lot of time in the 22 as well, uh, which is which is really good from a, an All Blacks perspective. Uh, if we then look at uh, the second game, let's have a look at that. And it was obviously a South Africa, a rotated South Africa beating Australia, 30 points to 12. Some people are saying that, you know, it wasn't the best game from South Africa's perspective, and that Australia were really, really poor. Um, I think Australia were... Generally quite poor, good at times. Uh, I thought they they controlled the game quite well at, at, at times, and I think that at times they were very much better in the wet conditions um, than us. But overall, especially as the game went on, so after starting it more and more foothold, physically Australia couldn't cope. Um, and what was very frustrating was, see, was seeing us have our scrum removed as a weapon with the going down to uncontested scrums. 
But um, as we grew into the game, as things started to start settle down, uh, you know, two more tries, for example, we started to just play um, a lot better. And, and I think we left points out there, which is what, what bodes well for us. The fact that we did manage to make all those changes, and yet you look at some of the stats, and we still gain a lot of meters, plenty of carries, um, plenty of defenders beaten, for example. Um, defensively, also looked pretty good. Um, didn't concede a try, which, which, which was really, really big, uh, to try and keep them out. I think that's... a been a very nice part of the last two weeks is that yes Australia I don't think are attacking that well I don't think they really managed to create space for them outside wide for example you know our wings haven't had a lot to do defensively um even even our, our, you know even sort of Jesse Creel and Kanye Am weren't that active on on defense this weekend because Australia were keeping quite tight with the really bad conditions but from a conference point of view to have not conceded a try um you know because you did one try so far in the rugby championship in total that bodes very, very well. Uh, as imagined, a lot of kicking there, both teams kicking quite similarly. Um, conversions over here for Sadako, 50%. Ashfan Gomezulu had a bit of a tough game um, in tough conditions, uh, but, you know, had still had some very nice moments, which which was good. Um, I thought our breakdown work was, was pretty decent. Probably could get better. Our mauls looked really good, which was nice to see. It was really good to see our mall becoming an attacking weapon once again. Uh, Lionels continue to be a bit of an issue for South Africa. I mean, as Australia as well. The wet conditions didn't help this at all. Uh, but I do think that's something to look at. Johan Krabla really, really struggled. Malcolm Marks, when he came on, got a bit better, but it wasn't uh, perfect. Discipline-wise, no yellow cards for South Africa this week. I played in the the three in the first week. So good there. And then again, you look at where we played, you know, where a lot of our possession was. And uh, it's kind of where you want to be playing. Uh, the game. So if we look at uh, at the the, the competition stats, let's look at the the, the the table. Ten points over there, five points for New Zealand. As mentioned, Argentina with four. So you know, a victory against New Zealand, if they were to not get a, a point out of it, would put us a minimum of nine points ahead of them. You know, and if a bonus point victory could put us ten points ahead of them. If they were to take two, uh, you know, a point for for coming within the seven, um, and we were to get a bonus point still, for example then we would still be sort of, you know, five, um, we could still get up to about nine points ahead of them, which is which is really good to see. So that's why I think that Inners Park game is so important. I think you win that game, it gives us light, it gives us a space to potentially lose the Cape Town game, for example. If we were to beat the All Blacks twice, it would give us an opportunity, it would give us the, 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 the safety net of losing once maybe in Argentina if we were to go down. But I personally think that, you know, we could go all the way undefeated in this tournament. I really do. I think this, the box side playing with so much confidence um, against the New Zealand side, which looked a lot better this weekend, I still don't think got quite the finished product. Um, so if we look at some of the team stats, New Zealand South Africa both win nine trials in the first two games, and um, at topping most of the charts. You have clean breaks, the same as well. Carries, very, very similar. Um, and meters gained, South Africa getting the most meters across the two games, which is which is interesting to see. Uh, Defenders beat is also an interesting one because, you know, you expect to see New Zealand at the top, and they are. But um, South Africa coming in second over there, and Argentina with pretty decent ones at, at well. Uh, if you look at uh, the set piece, this is something I want to look at quite, quite interestingly. I think, you know, this is where the box needs to improve. Um, we've got the worst lineups in the competition at the moment, um, which is really frustrating because we are trying new things, I think, at, at, at line You know, for example, that move, Ben Jason Dixon back to Eminem, we saw that a couple of times, but genuinely, if your lines are you know, when we had a really good functioning mall, but if your lines are not operating, you're not going to be able to use that more as a weapon. So that's a big problem that we need to try and fix. Uh, if you look at the scrums, 75% of the haven't really been able to use our scrum as much. I think it would have been a bit different had we had non-uncontested scrums this weekend. We had large scrums, which we didn't, because, you know, that, that injury, I think, stands to put about 45 minutes. So we had about just over half an hour of no scrums um, that were contested, which is a bit frustrating. Um, Discipline-wise, we've got three other cards all in one game. I think they're really too worry about um, breakdown also needs to work we need a bit of work on it um, for the 96% rock success rate but look at the players that's the individuals that have really stopped uh, stepped up so Will Jordan uh, Malcolm Marks and Kirkley Orange are currently sitting with the top two trials for the only obviously two weeks so this for me is more is more interesting um, we're not going to see a lot of staff at the top yet because we did rotate so for example here's Death Toy played both games that's why he's sitting up there next to the likes of uh, Sevilla and uh, Pablo Matera who, who is doing the most carrying uh, if you look at after that I would love to play two games as well. So he sort of finds himself up there. But John Cruz Malio did a lot of carrying for, for Argentina. Um, similarly, if you look at clean breaks, for example, Peter Steph the toy, three with Kirtley. Kirtley also doing that in one game, which is which is quite impressive from him. 
Um, same when we go to defenders, B2 Moxley with 11, um, Savio with 9, Leonard Brown with 6, um, you know, players who played both games. Jesse Creel, Jason Colby, both played two games. They're our highest defenders beaten so far. And um, last one, Ibn Etzebeth, 13. Kind of, as you'd imagine, we kind of went to the front of the line quite quickly, especially this weekend when things weren't going particularly well. Um, even actually, we were okay having to knock that ball down. Um, a couple of times. In terms of lean point scorers, you've got Daniel McKenzie with 32 points so far. Carrera with 21. Sash Farmer Gomezuni with 16. Daniel McKenzie, that trial this weekend definitely helped uh, sort of bring him a bit further away from his counterparts. And if you look at the top defenders over here, Black Hat, what I want to talk to see is um, Ben Jason Dixon. I think he's sitting with a 19 just in one game. So very, very uh, good to see that, that um, you know, Peter Steph, the toys air to be, would Pretty much be in this uh, in this this, this, this Hattie Payer second game. PSF's toy obviously is always going to be one of our best candidates in that situation. So overall, very happy as a South African, very much confident that we are going to potentially try and get this rugby championship title for the first time since 2019. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on it, the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.